away um, and I, I work the streets. I learned not to stand on a corner because if you're not in a pimp stable and it's his area, mm -hmm. you get beaten up. So I learned I couldn't be stationary. And then the, they were looking for me because I was a runaway. So I needed to stay transient. So I was constantly, you know, I stuck out my thumb and I'd get in anybody's car. All I had was a butter knife in my sock. I didn't even know to bring a steak knife. I had a butter knife. A butter knife. I had a butter yes. knife in my sock. And these men could see a baby in the car and they would have sex with her. Yes, yes. Okay. And then you joined a gang. I joined a gang. I got in a home when I was in um, I was in South Central Los Angeles, and I got in a gang. And I loved being in the gang because, because it, was it was a, a closest family thing to a family yeah. that I had. And um, I thought I wanted to die in the gang until I got shot. Wait, you got shot? I got shot. Cupcake, uh, <laughs> I, you got shot. I got okay, shot. Okay, we have to take a break. Okay. And I want to when we come back, I want to start up when you got shot. Okay. Because I hear it was at point blank range. Point blank range. We'll be right back. next from child prostitute to successful lawyer what changed your life i was going to turn a trick and i just happened to pass a plate glass window i saw me like i knew i was done i'm still with cupcake she's a former prostitute who managed to change her life and become a successful lawyer um, where we stopped before the break was you getting shot at point blank range when you were in a, in a gang how old were you i was 15. 15 years old mm -hmm. so you got shot and I know that 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 the bullet went inside of you and it is still there part yes. of it yes I was hit with a, a 12 gauge shotgun and a 22 what mm -hmm. so I have nine pellets from the 12 gauge and two bullets from the 22 still inside of you still inside of me is it because it, why is it still inside they couldn't get it out right they they, they lodged in between my vertebrae uh -huh. and the doctors said that it would be too dangerous to go in and get them out and it's a miracle that you still have uh motion in your they told legs. me i would never walk again but, but i did walk but you did but you yes. do very yes. yes okay now there is a moment that changed your life what mm -hmm. is the moment that changed your life because you guys don't you think her story is like not almost like not like real like a, a movie or a best-selling book <laughs> You know, but a lot of these things that we read and that we see in movies are always based on, a lot of the times based on something true. Mm -hmm. So what changed your life from this insane life that you had? What was the changing moment? Well, after getting shot, my life spiraled down even further. So now I'm into drugs and alcohol. I'm still turning tricks. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a thief. Um, and and I a just, gang banger. And a gang banger. Mm -hmm. Well, I got out the gang after okay. I got shot. Okay. Um, but, uh, and so, um, and I really got into drugs and alcohol. And I was actually homeless years later, you know, and I was living behind a dumpster because uh, I had nowhere to go. I was living behind a dumpster and I would leave that dumpster only to turn a trick to get more drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be leaving the dumpster and I was going to turn a trick and I just happened to pass a plate glass window. And you know, up until then I had been fooling myself mm -hmm. um, about what an addict and dope fiend and prostitute and, and thief looks like. Um, but for some reason, that moment I saw me, like mm -hmm. I knew I was dying. And I decided that I didn't want to die like that. I decided that I wanted to try to save myself. Mm -hmm. So you entered a 12-step program. I went into rehab, entered a 12-step program. Uh, found a sponsor that really helped you. Found a sponsor. Yeah. Uh, Vanita, who, who, who was very helpful. Saved your life. Actually, no. Nope. You know what? She helped me to help me. She helped me to help myself. Because it starts best. and ends with me. You're right. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So you went back to school. I you did. You went to community college. I heard that you had to learn one plus one. I started literally at one plus one. Because wow. I dropped out in the first semester of the 10th grade. Got it. So to this day, I do not have a high school diploma or a GED. Then how are you a lawyer? Because I started community college. I started okay. literally at one plus one. I graduated from there with honors. And then I transferred to a four-year degree, a four-year university. And uh, I graduated from there magna cum laude mm -hmm. and then I applied to law school flunked the law school admission test but one law school took a chance on me and ended up in the top 10 percent of my law class and she passed the bar the first time which only 50 percent of lawyers do mm -hmm. first time. and now cupcake is at um, one of the top 25 law firms right one of the 25 largest law firms in the nation um, I was I'm no you longer were. there but still girl yes you were I there. was there for six years yeah. six years that is amazing that is a truly amazing inspirational story um, we also have Harmony here hi Harmony hi, hi. so you also were in the sex industry tell mm -hmm. me what happened with you um, well for me I come from a background of you know sexual abuse and rape as well mm -hmm. and I think that was sort of almost grooming you know preparing me for sex work because then it, it was very familiar mm -hmm. you know being um, 
objectified was very familiar to me. And um, being sexually abused and raped so many times throughout my life, my, my identity was very much intertwined with my sexuality. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't think I was worth much more than that. And but you went to college, and you were in um, college, and you were in debt. Yeah. And a classmate suggested stripping, and then you went to your professor, and you asked your professor about this. And what did this professor say? Well, I thought he was going to tell me, no way, you've got a, you know, your future in front of me, but instead he said, well, it's not like you have to put it on your resume. I don't see a problem with it. Your professor yeah. said this yeah. at your college? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you, okay, you think, okay, I have approval from my professor, so you start right. stripping to get yeah. out of that $35,000 yeah. in debt. And who do you see? A couple uh, months later, he came into the club with his friends and had his friends ask me for a, a, a table dance. Yeah. I was, that I was is just devastated. dysfunctional right. professor. Right. Sick person. Yeah, and for me, I really looked up to him. Yeah. And I admired him, and I, um, for me, it just reinforced the belief that I already had that mm -hmm. all men were going to hurt you, use you, abuse mm -hmm. you, you know. I know um, there was something that made you look at yourself and go, who am I? What am I doing? Cupcake said it was behind that dumpster when she saw that plate glass reflection. Yeah. You also had a reflection incident that kind of woke you up. Tell yeah, us about that. Yeah, I went to work one day and I just, I remember for the first time being on stage and feeling naked and I thought mm. that that was unusual and I tried to shake it and, you know, I went um, to go just, you know, hustle and I was about to approach a man from behind and the song Purple Rain came on and it's the same song that I had auditioned to three years prior and, you know, I just, I had this kind of epiphany and I was looking at my life and it was no better. In fact, it was worse than it was. You know, I was in an abusive relationship. The guy had another girl pregnant. I was supporting him. I mean, really oh, horrible. Wow. You know, just the you know, reflecting how I felt about myself on the inside. And I just took a step back and I, I felt like I saw everything around me for the first time and I asked myself, you know, who am I and what am I, what am mm -hmm. I doing here? You it's know? interesting that Purple Rain was your audition in, but yeah. it was also the out for yeah. you. I think Prince would be very happy, like, okay, thank God it was also the out yeah. for you to uh, be able to leave. Yeah. So where are you now? I went back, I went, I finished my, my bachelor's in psychology, I went um, and got my master's in social welfare from UCLA, and wow, I Wow, so you have a master's? Yeah, 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 magna cum laude as well. Magna cum laude as well. Yeah. And, um, thank you. Now, I, I started a foundation to help other women in the sex industry and just run an outreach and support group, reaching out to them and helping mm -hmm. come alongside them and give them the support that they need mm -hmm. to just, you know, live healthier, more productive yeah. lives. Well, Natani's about to get on an airplane at the end of the show in a couple of minutes. What advice do you have for her um, as she starts her life over again where she, where she kind of feels like, you know, where, what to do? What, oh, what can she do with herself? Girl, I am so happy for you. This is so exciting. Um, I, my advice to you is just be encouraged because it is never too late for a fresh start. And like Cupcake says, it starts and ends with you. And you're gonna, you're being provided the resources, and they're giving you the the tools that you need. But you're gonna, at the end of the day, be the one to have to make those hard choices. And you can do it. You mm -hmm. have it in you. You have what it takes. You're a survivor. You're a fighter, and you will overcome this. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Cupcake, what advice do you have for Natani? Well, you know, and she, she repeated my words, you know, you, it, it does. It starts and it ends with you, and you've asked for help, and you've been offered help, and you've, you've accepted it. So you should feel proud of yourself and feel good okay. about yourself. Now okay. follow okay. through. But one I thing I want to make you remember is it's beginning. not going to be a piece of cake, you know? But neither is the streets, right? Yeah. Sometimes the unhealthy is familiar. It's not a piece of cake, but you could do it. Mm -hmm. If you can do what we've been doing, you can I do it. Do it. Yeah. So just don't quit. Even when you want to, don't quit. Yeah. I'm we'll ready. be right back. Thank you. by men in the sex industry, but a lot of women would say that Jenneth is being exploited by her own husband. Because the video that you're watching is Jenneth at work cleaning strangers' homes in a, what's about to be, a sexy maid costume. You see her going in now with her normal clothes on, and this is what she comes out in. Right? You can hire Jenneth to clean your house as the sexy maid, and her husband is the person that you contact to hire her. Who came up with this idea? Out of who, who, whose idea was this? Actually, it was my idea. It was your idea, Gus. Yes. Tell me how it came about. Recently, with the economic uh, situation we have, it has been very tough. And uh, we're having a hard time paying the bills. 
So we had to come up with some other ideas instead of asking the government for help. So you put out ads for her to clean houses and you didn't get much of a response? No, I, I believe they're having the same struggle as, as us. There's not too many houses out there to be cleaned with this economic... Uh, so then crunch. you said, okay, let me do something different. So you changed... Yeah.